Noin. 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 Hurry up, will you? Oh, Fire Brigade. Anderson's Cottage. Two miles down to Maythorn Road. And you'd better step on it. No wind. No way it's going. It looks as if they had paraffin there. But they got them all out. I don't even know who was in. Ah, here's the bloke, might tell you. He'd he surely kick off, you might say. That's it. I was over the road. God, it went up like a bomb. Like as if, uh, well, as if someone had dropped a fag in a petrol tin. Do you know who was in there? Mrs. A, for a guess. She never went out nor away. Kept herself to herself, as they say. Too mean to mix, if you ask me. Hey, hey, watch it. All you know, she could still be in there now. Uh, well, I won't say good riddance, though my missus couldn't abide her. What I will say is, rather her than him. Uh, you mean he's her away or something? That's what he told us in the checkers last week. Said he was off to London Tuesday last. Some sort of mating, he said. Keep the pressure up there. We're getting it under control. It's only this end of it anyway. Well, anyone... Or... No, there's no one in the other two rooms. And no one got out. Your chap here says Mrs. Anderson should have been there. He reckons Mr. Ray's in London. Well, if she was, she hadn't an hope unless she got out before it started. Even the foam didn't start in acting for ten minutes or so. So, what happens next? So they sift the ashes when they cool down. That's the police's picture. Try the bit over there again. Near what's left of that stone. Okay, Sarge. Christ. Sarah since this lot still burning my boots. Wait a minute. This looks like something. Hold it. All right. That could be her or... All right, well, what's left of her? Funny how dentures seem kind of indestructible, you might say. I well, you know it turns you up a bit. And me too. Now what do we do? You get on the blar to headquarters. There's a core box just down the road. Get them to send the experts along. After they've done their stuff, uh, we two better stick around. What's the idea? Well, from what that fella said, Anderson was expected back this morning. Suppose he comes straight here. I should ought to be someone here to break the news. What time do you reckon he'll get here? Well, Any time now. Isn't a train from town at 4 8 and she's a stopper? Any reason we know why he was up in town? Well, what made you ask that? I don't know exactly. Just I've heard one or two things. Such as? Come on, me lad, out with it. Seems someone once brought it out in the checkers. They'd seen Anderson in one of those dives with some blonde bit, who certainly wasn't his wife. That all? Well, I mean, he's got to be careful, him being a bank manager and all. So happens his bank likes his managers to pop up to town for what they call a refresher course once a year. He left on Tuesday in the regular way, and for weeks, it seems, half the village knew he was going. And today's Friday. Bit of luck for him. You could call it that. Funny, when you think of it, there being nobody in the house except her. Well, she was like that, by all accounts. Wouldn't have anybody in. Strong-minded soul altogether. Ah, there's that tag about not speaking ill of the dead, but I've always heard she lived pretty close to the bone. They say she even cut him off smoking. Of course, she was paying for some piece of junk on the Never Never. Nor I don't suppose he could shake her, his job being here. Not to mention what her lawyer might have dug up in the way of blondes. We got on to his bank about his insurance. He kept his policy there. Home and contents. None on earth. Fire chaps any idea yet how it started? Not yet. Doubt if they ever will. She never smoked herself. I can't imagine her being careless with matches. Ah, well. Always have said electricity and old beans don't mix. Uh, by the boy, a matter of interest. I suppose Anderson could have been in the war. So what? In Remy, maybe? Other words, he could have picked up something about delayed action sabotage, phosphor dissolving acid, that sort of lark. Just an idea, Sarge. After all, sounds like he had his reasons. Not such a bad idea at that. Between you and me and the gatepost, that's why we stayed on now. It just looks like him. Could be, he's putting it on, but uh, he looks pretty chewed up to me. Is... is... Ah, is she... I'm afraid she is, sir. I'm very sorry. I, I told her. I was always telling her. Told her what, sir? My wife had 
One could almost call it a mania for hoarding things which anyone else would have thrown away. You mean inflammable sort of stuff? The cellar immediately below our bedroom was, was literally stacked to the ceiling with combustibles. Cardboard boxes filled with shavings and stacks feet high of papers and magazines. Piles of old records, pots half full of paint, blackout curtains, broken furniture. Oh, that doesn't sound too good. Anything in the way of petrol or paraffin? I... I, I rather think there were a couple of half-full tins of kerosene. Sounds like as if one fault in the wiring would send that lot up. Maybe that's why it didn't spread. But it wasn't a cigarette end, anyway. We Neither of us smoked. Tell me, Mr. Anderson, was your wife a heavy sleeper? Very heavy. In fact, until June, she insisted on sleeping with the windows shut. Insisted? Well, my wife was rather inclined. Well... Let's just say she liked her own way, and it seemed less trouble to humour her. Excuse me asking, did you still share a room? We do, uh, it did. I forgot to mention also she was slightly deaf. I see. Uh, you wouldn't know, of course, if she had on an electric fire in the bedroom at any time last night. I, I mean, was it likely? You mean because she had a reputation round here for pinching pennies? Well, there's nothing wrong in not being extravagant. Well, if I know her, she had it on all last night. After all, no one could have called it warm. In other words, she usually did have it on if the night was chilly. She had one bar burning all night until well into April. It was her one extravagance. Look, Mr. Anderson, no use staying here harrowing yourself. There's nothing more you can do. I suppose there isn't now. Why don't you call in at the station? They'll give you a wash and a brush up and a cup of tea. Yes, they'll also, no doubt, want to ask me some questions. Very well. Are you both staying on here? Uh, just for a bit, to keep the public away and all that. Uh, see you later, sir. Right, sir. What were you up to, George, while we two were chewing the rag? Just mucking about in the cellar. Find anything? I don't rightly know as yet. You know anything about hedgehogs? Oh, I kept one as a pet once when I was a kid. Why on earth? Remember its habits? Not much, except it'd go anywhere, even burrow under a wall to get at a saucer of milk. What's all this in aid of? I'll show you. Then you tell me if I'm crackers. See this, and what was the stove? Sure, one hedgehog. Though why it wasn't burnt to a crisp. Must have been right under the arch of the stove, not quite touching it. You can see the spines are scorched. Okay, so what? Now, take a look at that ramp affair leading up to that grating. Notice by the way it's broken. The grating, I mean. Well? Hempecked husbands make good murderers. I read that somewhere. Other words, he did have an incendiary bomb, complete with built-in time fuse. Get along with you, George. What are you trying to prove? All right, I know I had my suspicions. Mine was something mechanical-like. But how the heck does one dead hedgehog come into it? Hedgehogs hibernate through the winter, like, say, in a nice, cosy cellar. All right, come March, they wake up from their snooze and feel peckish, which makes them want to move out by the way they came in. That is, if the way they came in still open. If you mean that grating, that's open all right. Well, uh, enough for a hedgehog, I'd say. Funny, don't you think? A fussy little man like Anderson never had it repaired. OK, so it wanted to get out. So it left it too late and got kippered. Now what? Suppose someone just blocked that grating up from inside with a chunk of wood wedged between that ramp and the floorboard of the bedroom above. Don't bother to look for the wood. The fire's taking care of that. Well, wait a minute. You mean, on that floorboard up there was the stove? Checks all right for distance. Grating's almost in line with a plug. All right, then loosen that board, trim it a bit, and what gives? If the support should just happen to slip, down swings one end of the board, stove slides into the cellar, and up she goes. Would you mind telling me how it slips? Not just when he's out of the house, but while she's in bed above with the stove on? Let's say he knows a bit about hedgehogs himself. Being creatures of habit, and half-doped anyway, after sleeping it off for five months, they don't bother to look for another exit. Anyway, I don't mind betting there isn't one left unblocked. OK, OK, I'll give you the grating. Go on. He leaves here Tuesday as per schedule, and the fire was last night or first thing this morning, Friday. Hedgehogs sleep by day, so they'd only been working nights. Anyway, if there were more of them, there wouldn't be room but for this little chap at the top of that ramp. Uh, wait a minute, Sarge, hold it now. Depends, of course, how thick the wood is, but I'd put it at 25 hours' hard work. Just about right. 
Ah, honest, George, this is all clean crazy. Is it? Anyway, you could never begin to prove it. Murder by a jog. Uh, 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 Defence counsel, uh, give the jury the laugh of their lives. <laughs> you needn't tell me. All the same, call it curiosity or just plain cussedness. I'd still like to sit on here out of sight and watch him when he comes back. So you planted the bait. One edge hog, one stove. Laid out side by side, exhibits A and B. Well? He might just get a bit of a shock when he sees them. That won't prove anything. Here he comes now. You see what I see? He's smoking. He's seen them. Now where's he off to? Round the back for a guess by that grating. Come on. Ah, hello, Mr. Anderson. Looking for something? I, I, what do you want? You, Mr. Anderson. And we'll take that saucer as well. 